Hi guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel and to Elder Scrolls Online, a help video for beginners. Now in our previous video, I played the loot for you, so in this one I'm playing the flute for you. <laughs> okay, so in the previous video we talked about armour and weapon crafting. In this video we're going to talk about alchemy, enchanting and provisioning. Now also in our last video I said don't start crafting. Excuse me, you just stopped me playing my flute, how rude. I was talking to the peeps. How rude of you. Right, start again. As I was saying, I'm also rudely interrupted. In our last video I said to you don't start crafting on your character until you're level 50. There is one exception to this rule. And that is provisioning. What is provisioning? Basically, cooking dishes and brewing drinks of all kinds of stuffs. Now, when we first start with provisioning, we won't be able to make a lot. We need to find recipes in the world. And I'm sure you've already found some. But if you haven't, and this, is, this part's for my guildies, or any guild, have a look in your guild bank. Because I'm sure that you will find lots of recipes and they're normally under the consumable tab. Um, let me have a look. Design, design, design. That's all to do with furniture. Sure, uh, patterns, that's to do with furniture. Let me have a look. Recipe. Honeydew, hors d'oeuvres, garlic, guar, stuffed grape, golden lager, something, I can't read it. the green text, it's horrible. Infusion. Meaty matey infusion, princess's delight, red rye beer. There's all sorts of recipes and you even get ones that are purple quality. Okay, now we have a little look at this one, the tarragon chicken. You can see here it will increase max health for 35 minutes. And the ingredients is poultry in a seasoning, which is pretty darn good. Okay, now if we also look at the top here. There's already some food being made in the bank. Cheese, pork, schnitzel. You can see that you need to be level 25. Okay. Let's have a look at some more. Hunter's pie, level 10. Pan fried trout, level 15. Tomato rice, level 20. More tomato rice. What's the difference? That's a fruit dish. Both fruit dishes. Okay, rabbit millet pilaf. Ooh, okay, level 15. So this is why provisioning is an exception to the rule, because you can make food to buff your character from level 1. Food and drink, as long as you found the recipes, can be buffed for your character from level 1. And provisioning is probably one of the easiest, easiest things. If you look in your bank, uh, guild bank or anywhere, you'll see all sorts of just like berries, Apples, bananas, barley, beets, bitter green, all sorts of stuff. Carrots, cheese, <laughs> you name it, we have it. Okay? And I'm sure if you're in a guild, that's the same for you as well. But if you're not in a guild, every time you pop around the world into dungeons, delves or whatever, you're going to be picking up lots and lots of stuff for provisioning. Okay? Now I'm going to take my little cab. We are in Oridon again, as we already are, always are, rather. There's two possible places you can do provisioning. In this city, and in much, most of the major cities, there's a, possibly a couple of places. Now I know in this one there's a cook pot. You can also find cook pots out in the wild out on the maps, in dells, in dungeons, all sorts of places, and they normally look like this. Okay? Cooking fire. If you find a cooking fire, and I'm sure you've seen some in dells, you can do your provisioning there and then. So if we have a look, now this character, she is provisioning level 50, as you can see here. So she's learnt a lot, a lot of recipes. But it comes, if you look at the top right hand side there, it comes in two sections. There's food, and there's drinks. Now there's also 
furnishings. Now in our last video when we're talking about armour and weapons you will also see these furnishings as well because some of the furniture you can make will use the woodworking bench, some will use the blacksmithing bench and some will use the clothing bench and the same goes for here. We can make an apple display if we had some flour. We can make a common bowl of stew for display if we had flour and potato. We could make a radish <laughs> or we can actually make lighting if we had why would you need flour to make lighting? I don't get it. But there you go, anyway. You can make things also in here. So let's just have a little look. <coughs> Excuse me. You can use this section here to tick there to set have skills or have ingredients. Now if we click that, it'll narrow down the list for you. And you can see that I can make roast pig level one, chicken breast level one so even if your character is level one you can get a buff that will increase your maximum health for 35 minutes with that one that's a health buff that one is and that one is uh, fruits ah magica buffs another magica buff level one if you're going out and about dungeoning, delving, even just questing guys. Try and get as many recipes as you can, as many ingredients as you can and make lots and lots of food and you can buff yourself up every 35 minutes and this is what provisioning is all about. Look at this one, level 15 is green quality as well. We've got in vegetables, baked potatoes, level 1. Garlicky greens, that's stamina and that's stamina. So by the looks of things, your meat is going to give you the health. Your fruit dishes are going to give you Magica. Your vegetable dishes will give you stamina. And your delicacies. Ooh. Sweet swanguine apples. And this one for two hours. Look at that. I wonder how many of those we can make. So to make your dish, you're just going to press R. And you'll keep pressing out until you run out of ingredients. Okay, and then if you notice there, the delicacies has disappeared. We can make some cabbage biscuits. One, two, and they will disappear because we have ticked have ingredients. We make the baked potato. Vegetable dishes has now disappeared because we've had ingredients ticked. So provisioning guys, when you're out and about, have some food with you. I'm going to have a baked potato. That does not look like a baked potato. That was a loaf of bread. But there you go. That's the game for you guys. So that is a little rundown about provisioning. That is the exception to the rule guys. You can provision from your character being level 1. Oops. Pressing the wrong buttons all over the place. Next, we're going to have a look at alchemy. Okay, I'm back in the guild bank of storage. And we're going to have a look at what is alchemy ingredients. What's the difference between these, which are provisioning, which are normally in white. And then, if you click on this, it says at the top left, where the arrow is pointing, alchemy. Okay? You see that? So we going to grab some of those. Uh, withdraw those. Blue Entoloma. Alchemy. We're going to withdraw those. Boobalos. Withdraw. Butterfly wing. Alchemy. Withdraw. Anything else we have in here? Because I don't think I've got a lot on my main character, so that's why I'm just popping in here. I'll put it all back. Don't worry, guys. Mushrooms. Withdraw. Flesh fry lava. Withdraw. Now then, we've got things like grease. Again, alchemy. Withdraw. Lots and lots of grease in there. Um, Ico. Alchemy. Imp stool. Alchemy. This stuff is provisioning. Jasmine is provisioning. 
we have it. Oh, let's get some of those as well. Withdraw. I, just, I don't want to get too much, just a little bit, so I'll be able to show you some things. Ah, natural water. Withdraw. Get a little bit of nightshade. And a couple of known root. That should do us. Now, again, in every major city, you will find alchemy stations. And in most cases, the alchemy stations are very, very near the enchanting stations as well. So I know where this one is, but you can always look on the map and it will tell you. That's General Goes a Pack Merchant. Let me have a look down here. It is. It's a tailor. The Alchemy Station, Station, Enchanting Table, Enchanter, Alchemist and Outfit Station. The Crystal Vial. Okay, that is where we are heading off to. Now again guys, when you're travelling around the world, you will see things to pick up, to harvest. And like with the wood and the iron ore and the cotton and the jute, you will also pick up all sorts of stuff for alchemy as well. Now the alchemy station I do know in this building is upstairs. Oh hello, put some clothes on. Put some bloody clothes on woman, honestly. Now there's just one thing I want to show you before we actually click on the alchemy station. And that is under skills. Now if we see here where we'd normally put our skills in to spend our skill points, at some point craft will appear. Okay? And you will see underneath here, alchemy, black stage, uh, blacksmithing, clothing, enchanting, provision and woodworking. You can actually bump up your skills in here. Again guys, wait until you're level 50 and you've used all your skill points everywhere else. Because you never know what you're going to need your skill points for. You don't know if you want to be a crafter on your character. You don't know if you're going to have more than one character. You might have one character that's going to specialise in alchemy. You might have one that's going to specialise in blacksmithing. Who knows? Now you'll see uh, on the right hand side here all the passive abilities. And there's one that you can get for each of them. For alchemy, blacksmithing, clothing, enchanting, etc. It's called Keen Eye. So it's telling you here... Herbs and fungi in the world will be easier to see when you are 20, minute, 20 meters or closer. That will apply the keen eye to all of them. Now you look, keen eye for all, keen eye for cloth, keen eye for finding the rune stones. I don't think there's one in there. But if we just look at the provisioning tab at uh, abilities for now. Remember some of those recipes said that you had to have a recipe quality or recipe improvement or chef or brewer or anything like that. This is where you would need to put your skill points to be able to read that recipe. There is also another thing you can get for any kind of crafting is a hireling. Now depending on how many you have when you go offline a hireling will find food and drink ingredients and post them to you in your mail. If you did it with woodworking, your hireling, do you, you should have what they are, lumberjack hireling, will send you wood and possibly other items every day. So that can be quite handy if you just want to like pop one to unlock in there. Now I'm going to get the lumberjack will send me something. I am just going to quickly check my mail because I haven't checked it in a couple of days. There we go. This is one of my hirelings. And this is for the clothier. And they have sent me an emerald, some crush weed, star metal, some hemming, and some embroidery. So wow, we've got two really good items out of that. And they will always be in your mail. So if you decide to be a crafter, I would expend a few points in there. Really, really good idea. Okay then, it's time to do a little bit of alchemy and see what alchemy is all about. Now I've started with alchemy because it's absolutely totally different from any of the crafting that you've seen. Here is our alchemy station. And as you can see down here, it looks a little bit different. Now if we just scroll down here on the right hand side, you can see that our ingredients... One more. We'll look at beetle scuttle. 
It has four properties and I have only unlocked one which is protection. The other three are unknown. But if we come down to the next one, I've unlocked three. So we know from the blue mushrooms we're going to get restore health, invisible, cowardice and there's one left to unlock. However, the one underneath that I've unlocked all four. So we know from the purple flowers we're going to get spell resist, restore health, cowardice, restore magicka. Okay? The only way you can unlock these guys, it's not like Skyrim, you don't eat them, don't panic, <laughs> is by messing about and putting a few in here. Now solvent, where the arrow is pointing now, comes in two different things. If you want you can either make potions, which are helpful, or you can make poisons. You could click on there, hang on, where's our where are they? Should be up at the top. There we go. So we know the natural water is going to make a potion, and we know that grease and echo is going to make a poison. So we're going to, we've got plenty of these. We're going to stick those in. We're going to press E to add, and as you can see, they've come down here to make a level three potion. So this is where we start to add in things that we don't know about to unlock them. Let's have a look, see if we can do anything. Let's put a scrib. Actually, a hmm, scrib jelly. Let's just try it. We're going to add one in there. Let's have a look. Is there anything else we don't know too much about? This one, beetle scuttle. Now, you can only put two items in here, guys. And it's already shown you that we know we've got protection on that one and lingering health. Now, if we pressed R to craft, these reagents will not match. Okay? Or re not react. So you can take one of them out and put another one in. And have another go. We have just made another potion. And we've got an achievement. You have discovered the following traits. We now know that Scrib Jelly will do Ravage Magica and the blue mushrooms will do ravage magica and as you can see if you just exit under out of there we now have unlocked more okay that is how you unlock the traits just by messing about and putting stuff in you have to do quite a lot of that <laughs> to unlock everything so how do you want to make a potion that we know about again we're going to put our main solvent in and say we want to make something that says restore health. We want to make health potions. But if you look at our blue mushroom here, we already see it says restore health. So we're going to add that in. And right underneath is the purple flowers that also has restore health. So we're going to put that in. And it's telling you you can make a sip of cowardice. Applies minor cowardice to you, increasing your ultimate cost. However, it's going to restore all that health immediately. It's going to grant major fortitude, which increases your health recovery. However, because it's got some bad things in those ingredients, it's going to apply the minor cowardice. Okay? So that's not pretty good. We don't really want to use in that. So let's get rid of the selections by pressing X. Put those back in again. Let's try and find something a little bit better. I don't have a lot with me. Lingering health. Lingering health. Let's just try those because I'm interested. Sip of lingering health. Restore health per second. Ah! Now that could be a good one to make, couldn't it? But you need to be at level 3. Okay, well that's fine. Restore 489 health per second for 11.5 seconds. That's not bad at all. Okay, we're going to clear selections on that. Because the other thing you can do with alchemy is of course make the poisons. And of course poisons are applied to your weapons, guys. So we're looking for nasty things now. So let's have a look nasty things that kind of ravage health I'm 
sure I've seen this one. There we go. Ravage health. Damage health potion 1. Deals 216 poison damage per second. All poisons are applied 20% of the time on light attacks, heavy attacks or weapon abilities whilst slotted. This poison suppresses your weapon enchantment. Okay. So that's something else to consider if you're going to think about using poisons. If you have an enchantment on your weapon like frost, it's not going to use frost, it's going to use the poison. But I'll tell you what guys, if you level up your alchemy when you get a bigger character, there's some absolutely awesome potions and poisons that you can make and they sell for a lot of money. Okay? Again, with my videos, they're for the basics, for the very, very beginner character. If you want to know more about alchemy, please feel free to go and look at other videos on YouTube or anywhere else. My videos are for basics, okay? And I think that has almost covered the basics of alchemy. So just to refresh, to find out about items, you pop them into, so we'll pop that back in there. This one we don't know much about. Let's see if we can unlock something on it. Uh, will this make anything? It's an inert potion. And we haven't unlocked anything. It's a shame. I was hoping to try and do it again for you. But I don't think we care. Let's try with a nightshade. What's that going to do for us? A sip of protection. Grants you minor protection, reducing your damage taken. Let's have a go at that then. there we go so that is a little breakdown on alchemy for you and also skill points next we're going to have a look at enchanting okay guys time to look at enchanting now as you saw in my previous video I enchanted that um, chess piece that we made for our little baby character and enchanting it really does help give your items a good boost if we look at some of the items we have that is enchanted with a maximum stamina that is enchanted with maximum health uh, stamina enchantment on that one on weapons that doesn't actually have one on wow or that one but enchanting really does help especially on your weapons okay so where do we go? Again we are in Oridon or Oridon and we're over here where it says Alchemy Station Enchanting Table. Every major city will have these places guys. You just need to have a look on the maps to find out whereabouts they are. And your enchanting stations look like this with a little crystal on. There's one also over in that corner as well but we're going to use this one. Okay. Now again it's going to look different. To make Excuse me. To make an enchantment, you're going to need three different runes. Hang on. Be bear with me, guys. I'm going to have another coughing fit. This is just no good. Oh, my goodness. Coughing and sneezing all over the place. It's the damn pollen. Stupid pollen. Okay, where is it? We're going to need three different runes. And as you can see from the bottom here, they come in three different shapes. Squares, a weird shape, and a circle. Now, as you've been going around the maps, guys, you've probably seen these little rune things that shine and when you've collected off them you're going to get different kinds of runes from them. I've got quite a selection in my backpack here which I'll be depositing into the guild bank. Now if you see anything that's purple called Rekuta or anything that is yellow that says Kuta do not do not do not do not sell them to anybody keep them in the guild bank because the recruiters and the cooter are very very special indeed they are worth a lot of money and it's been very very tempting to get rid of them but i hopefully with our guild anyway willow's guild keep them in there for now okay because somebody in our guild might like to specialize in enchanting and these things are absolutely brilliant and we'll need them at some point okay so how do we do enchanting? Well the first thing we're going to need in here is a square one. So we're going to put this in. 
Now you can see underneath there where it says translation, it says reduce. If we look at a different square one, it says develop. Okay, this is where it starts to get a little bit complicated. So let's just pop this one in. So we are going to reduce something. Okay, <laughs> now we have to look at our different shape ones. That's stamina, that's stamina regen, and that's disease. So, how about we pop in stamina? So we're going to reduce stamina. And now we need a circle. Fine. Fine? Hang on. Do we have any more circle ones? Ta. Base. Okay. What is that going to give us? Trifling glyph of absorb stamina. So again, reduce means absorb. Stamina. And that's your base room. Okay? So that is what it's going to do. It's going to deal magic damage and restores 59 stamina. And you need a level 1. Okay? So let's click on R to create that. Brilliant. So what we're going to do is just clear selections out. I'm going to put the tars back in again because they're base. And let's have a look at something else we could do. Which one was this one? That's subtract. And that one is add. So let's put an add in. So we're going to add power. There's a power rune. Inferior glyph of weapon damage. So this is a weapon glyph. Increase your weapon damage and spell damage by 86 for 5 seconds. So we are adding power. Okay? Let's make one of those. Now again guys, some of these that you will not know. And you might have to have a little bit of play around to unlock what they do. I don't think I've got any that I don't know on this one. That's frost. Stamina. If we pop that one in there. It's going to give us a frozen weapon enchantment. Again, a weapon glyph. So we're going to add frost to our weapon. Good deal. 518 frost damage, minimum level 5. So that kind of makes sense. It might be a little bit complicated when you first um, look at them and think, what the heck am I doing with all that? This one, if we pop that one in now, we're going to add stamina adds up to 225 maximum stamina to an armor glyph do you get do you get do you get how it's going some are going to be for armor some are going to be for weapons and you can do poisons you can do all sorts of stuff the other neat thing about enchanting is hang on come out of there come out of there silly bugger because we've made some glyphs now and there will be you know, a normal backpack. Here they are, look. We don't want to destroy them, guys. We can, if we want to, either sell them. They're not worth a lot, to be fair. Or we can actually undo them again. So, let's have a look at undoing one. Clear selections. We need to extract. We were in the creation tab, so now we're going to the extraction tab. So here's one... I have here which is a um, minimum level 35 average glyph of flame. I'm going to pop it in there and we're going to extract. Again just like with the blacksmithing, the woodworking and the clothing you can again extract things out of here. They're not worth a lot so I probably would just to get rooms that you're short of. Deconstruction yielded no results. Oh no! Let's try this one. Extract. Georgia. Nice. Keep going. We've got four of those to do. Nope. Nothing out of that one. And Notade. Some of these I've not actually heard of, I don't think. Let's keep going. Let's see what we can find out of these ones we have in our backpack. Not the purple ones, or the blue ones, obviously. Let's try this one. What do we get? Nothing. This one. Nothing, no. Nothing, oh my goodness. Okay, so let's have a look through. Obviously, you get blue quality ones and green quality ones. And it tells you that it requires aspect improvement of two. Now, remember when we were looking at the skill trees? And I said down here, 
go into enchanting aspect improvement you see so we would need to be able to use that blue one to put a point into there okay so now when we go back into here we can use that blue one but we don't know what it is it's got a question mark look translation question mark let's pop it in there so we need a random square one uh, as well as a one of those unknown effects because we don't know what this one does so let's have a look and see you have translated the following superior okay and we have just got a jewelry glyph adds 937 disease resistance wow that was actually very very lucky so again just like the alchemy guys it's a little bit hit and miss you have to do a little bit more thinking about it it's not as straightforward as the blacksmithing or anything like that just a little bit more to think about now at the top of the video I said there was one rule to not crafting before blacksmithing and that was provisioning however if you feel after seeing this video that you want to specialize and I'm using the word specialize in alchemy or enchanting then start having a little play unlocking all the recipes from the alchemy and the enchanting but try not to be using your greens or your blues okay and again whatever you make guys you can deconstruct again so until you realize or understand what you want to do with your character I would stay clear of the weapons and the armor smithing unless it's something that you really really want or you're struggling to find out there provisioning go for it from day one from your character being level one just go for it alchemy and enchanting have a little play about with it start to unlock the ingredients and the traits of the alchemy and the enchanting okay I hope again this video has been a little helpful for you if it has please drop me a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe for future content to the channel any comments or suggestions can go underneath the video thanks a lot guys any more um, ideas for videos you'd like to see please let me know either in comment section or on discord but for now guys have a fantastic day take care and we'll see you soon